How's it going everybody? It's John. Today I want to look at some content that I had done a little while back before actually starting the channel. So I would regularly do journaling or vlogging just for myself because to me that's faster than writing stuff down. Although I do write stuff down, I really like better video logging because it's much more open and easy to lay out my thoughts. And this way I can go back to them and re-listen and extract some of this stuff and just use that if I need to. In this case, I think the entire video is valuable. And I had actually touched a little bit on that in a previous video that I had done regarding product design not just being the only key factor for success in a SaaS company. But in this case, I think the entire video would be much more beneficial. So let's go and check out this video. You'll see the sound is not as good. My mic was actually a bit further. Uh, so you'll have to bear with me there, maybe pump up the sound, but you should be able to make out what I'm saying anyways. So let's go to it. The title of this video, product design, just won't cut it. All too often we see companies heavily invest into product design. And while that's great, there are multiple forces at play and product design is one of them, but you know, design in general is about, um, doing things on purpose. And when you look at the entire customer journey, the product is just one touch point in which they'll actually interact. Even if it's the highest touch point, which means that, that you can invest the most in there, which is great. But ultimately, you know, for example, if the infrastructure is bad and the product is slow, you'll have a bad customer experience and they won't want to use your product. If they need to interact with uh, sales, and the documentation or explanations are lacking, then, you know, your sales cycle is going to be longer or, or their whole sales experience is going to be bad. So you might do be doing less sales. Um, as far as a customer success point of view, if the onboarding is not optimized, if the support team is too long to reply, all these things contribute to a aggregate customer experience, right? So just putting the effort in product, you can have the best design product, but if it's slow, if the onboarding is crap, if uh, the support is not on par, the customer experience is going to be bad. Therefore you won't have adoption. You won't have engagement that you're supposed to be having. And, you know, design is much more than, than just the product, right? So what I was talking about earlier about onboarding, customer support, sales, all these things, these things are all in line with service design, how you actually interact as a company. And even then how departments actually exchange information from, let's just say, uh, once they make the sale, how are they transferring that information onto the onboarding team? Are you duplicating information through different software, all these things, what notes are not following all these things. Uh, if they're not optimized can lead to errors, which again leads to a bad customer experience, right? Or increased time into onboarding them or all these things. Um, and this is actually organizational design. So, you know, to have a really, really good product. And this is mostly from my experience in, in making SaaS products, you need to go further than that and evangelizing what design should be at the level that would benefit the customer the most is beyond product design. So I don't think everybody as a product designer needs to kind of have this experience. Um, you know, if you're not familiar with service design, uh, organizational design, brand design, communication design, business design, uh, it doesn't matter. Right. But as long as you know that your responsibility can only cap to a certain degree, as far as the customer experience, then you can better take decisions when you're designing the product because you understand the limitations of what you're supposed to be accomplishing. And what I've seen is that people have expectations about product design where they're just unrealistic. Um, there's so much you can accomplish just by designing the product. And if you say yes to these things and hold yourself accountable, then you're going to be uh, potentially putting yourself in a compromised position or just, you know, the company is going to have more difficulty than it, than it's having. And you might not understand why, how come the engagement's bad or, or what's going on, et cetera. You know, sometimes you can kind of see stuff going around in, in the, the support channels. Uh, you see customers complaining on this, but like, 
fundamentally, there are so many things that need to come into play to make a great product actually work. And the customer is interacting much before they get into the product from how they see the company, the brand, the first time they engage with it from a, a communication design point of view, which is like outbound marketing could be inbound marketing, right? That's communication design and brand design doing its work there. After that, they're coming into the, the sales funnel, which is service design. They're getting sold the product. They're getting uh, shared documentation. They're getting presentations. All these things are, are kind of looping back again into communication design. Uh, and then once they're converted and they, they go to onboarding, then this is service design again. Um, and then they complete that process. There's account management, customer success, uh, doing their work. And after that, they're in the product. So if they're actually getting onboarded in the product without an account manager, then yes, that's product design. If you're doing a self onboarded product, then that's product design. And that's it. I'm kind of out of juice on this one. I'm going to come back to these notes later on. So as you can see in the design practice, the product design element is not just the only main factor that's going to bring success to the company. Design needs to span its wings at a much larger area so the customer can have a better designed experience, not just at the product touch points, but at touch points that are beyond what the product is servicing. And hopefully this video kind of drew out a little bit more of a, a map on what that should be. So those were my thoughts. If you found it valuable, don't be shy to click that like button to give the YouTube algorithm a boost and I'll catch you in the next one.